And y'all raise up your children in the way to go. When they get old, they shall not depart. They'll remember. And we just, uh, I tell you, our children of church is a girl. And look at that. Just praise God for it. Amen. I love kids. Love children. Y'all, we've been doing a uh, series. We've been doing a series on David. And we're still doing a series on David. Amen. God has put some stuff in my heart I want to share with you today. I, I was wrestling with the Lord over this. Because in my, in my spirit, and, and y'all have to pray for me, because sometimes we love to, as pastors, we like to preach messages where everybody gets excited and they want to jump and hoop and holler. That's fun. Can I get amen up in here? But see, some message God give you, it's not about hooping and hollering. Come on. Some messages just are, they're sort of, I don't want to say hard, but they get us to thinking. They get us to digging in. They get us to searching our own heart to see where we're at. Can I get another amen up in here? And really today, that's what God has put in my spirit in this message, is for us to search our own heart. Because we say that we'll listen to the Lord, we'll be obedient to God, and we'll do what He tells us to do. But sometimes, because of people around us or different situations, we don't always do what God would have us to do. And this message today is going to let us search our hearts, y'all, and see how we react to people, to those around us. Do we react the way God wants us to? Can we say, like David, you know, God said about David, now here's a man after my own heart. The only person I see in the Bible that God talks about a man after his own heart. But I'm wondering today, can God say that about us here today? Anybody in this, in this body, any man or woman today, can he say that our heart is a heart like his heart? And I believe God's going to test us today. Are we ready for that? Can I get amen now? Because I don't know if I'll get too many later, okay? Amen. Can I get amen? Amen. 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 I want to give you this, okay? And, for, and uh, just stand on your feet one time for the opening of this scripture. I'll pray, then we'll pray. Uh, pray that God will use it for his glory. Amen. We've already covered this. We've already said it, but I want to speak it one more time. 1 Samuel 13, verse 14 says this. The Lord has sought him a man after his own heart. David was a man after God's heart. He wanted to please God. And in fact, God said, hey, David's heart's like my heart. And with that, I want to just pray, Lord, I ask that you would now quicken this word in my spirit. Lord, help me to be that oracle, that speaker that you'd have me to speak today, that your word would flow forth through this vessel, that it would penetrate the hearts, minds, and souls of your people, that you would change us here today, Father, that you would use us for your glory, that you would fill us with the Holy Ghost, that we would be sensitive to your voice, that we would listen to you, Father, we know by your word that obedience is always better than sacrifice. Help us to be obedient, Father. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Can we give God one more time of praise, y'all? Because I'm going to have to feel this real good. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You can be seated. If you got a message today, here's the message. And you can look at your neighbor and say this What do you do? You'll understand that in a minute. What do you do? Look at your neighbor. Look at somebody behind you or in front of you and say, what do you do? And I'm not talking about your occupation. Think about this for a minute. What do you do when circumstances are not going your way? What do you do when somebody's coming against you? What do you do when somebody's right in front of your face? What do you do when somebody's chasing you and wanting to kill you? What do you do? David was a man like that. We're going to see what David did when the king of Israel was chasing him, wanting to kill him. Because I wonder sometimes what do we do when we have people around us, enemies around us, and whether we like it or not, you have enemies here. If you're a born-again Christian, you're going to have some enemies. You're going to have people trying to stop the purpose and plan of God in your life. Can I get an amen? So what do you do when you face opposition? You should, amen. Praise God, that's the first thing you better do. What do you do when you face somebody, though, who wants to kill you and to take you down and to stop that purpose God has in your life? What do you do? That's where we're going today, okay? With that, we're going to look at the scriptures in 1 Samuel 23, 14. It says this. 1 Samuel 23, 14 says, Saul sought David every day, but God delivered him not into his hand. 
Can you imagine y'all being on the run every day from a, a king who's mad, who's jealous, who, who knows that this next boy, David, is rising up to be king? Can you imagine King Saul chasing him every day? Could you imagine being on the run every day from somebody who hates you and wants to kill you? Come on, church. Can we even fathom that? This is the place that David is in. Now, this is the place, and this what the reason I believe God is getting us because he's trying to get us into a place where no matter what happens, y'all, no matter what the opposition is, we learn to trust in God. We learn that, tr that God is in control. He fights our battles, but we have to be obedient during this, this struggle, this place we're at. David has not yet reached the kingdom. C come on, he's not king yet, okay? He's striving to be there. He knows his calling. He knows he's been anointed to be king, but he's on this journey. And he's got a king who's really like a mad king in there right now, King Saul. I mean, the Bible talks about the, uh, the, the demonic spirit, the devil spirit coming on Saul. So this man is not the king that, that Israel has now. He's not doing what God wants him to do, but yet he's trying to stop the purpose and the plan of David. So when you're in that kind of a battle, you've got to learn to trust in who? The Lord. You can't trust in yourself. You can't trust in the king. Come on, because he ain't right. He's trying to kill you. You've got to learn to trust the Lord. And this is where David is at. Now, here's what we're going to, if you're in your Bibles, go to 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1. We're going to start with verse 1. And it came to pass when Saul was returned from following the, the Philistines, that it was told him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engadi. Okay, now here he is. David has found a place. God has David in the, in the, in the wilderness of Engadi. If you look at Engadi, it means spring of the goat. Everybody say spring of the goat. So here's what I want you to see. Here's David. He's in the wilderness. But in the wilderness, there's a place that God has for him. And it's like an oasis in the desert. God can give you an oasis in the desert, amen? The place that he's at, it had fresh water springs, it had waterfalls, it had vegetation, had countless caves. And all of this is above the Dead Sea. Now, we've seen the Dead Sea, so that's an amazing, amazing place to see. But all this where David had, he's above, okay? It was a perfect place for David to hide, for David to work with him, for, for God to, to take care of him or even protect him, okay? It was high up, and you could see when the enemy would come in. Now, this is the place that God has David. But it's very important for David to do what? Listen to the Lord. Be obedient to the voice of God and not to the voice of man. Amen. Oh, Lord, can man Amen. get you in trouble? Man always tries to help God out. And man will always try to tell you to do things that God might not necessarily be telling you to do. Can I get another amen? Amen. Now, let's just go to, and look at verse 2. It says, then Saul, because Saul knows where David's at, here he is, he's chasing David again. He takes 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel. He goes to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. So he's got 3,000 men. The most men that David's got is about 400, okay? Here's 3,000 men coming after this man David to do what? To kill him. That's what Saul wants to do. Verse 3 says, he came to the sheep goats by the way. Hit the, where, where there was a cave. Saul went into the cave to cover his feet. Won't go into that far, but anyway, he went to hide because he had some issues he had to deal with. David said to his men, and David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. So what I want you to see is here comes King Saul by himself. He goes into this cave where David and his men are. David and his men are inside this cave, all right? It's dark in the cave. He can't see it. King Saul don't even know they're there. Now look at verse 4. Here's what the men of David begin to say to David. This is a key verse, y'all. says this, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto you, Behold, I will deliver your enemy into your hand, that you may do to him as it shall seem good unto you. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of David's robe privately. What, are, what is David's men saying to David, y'all? What is David's men saying to David? Did I say David's robe? Saul's robe? I meant to cut off Saul's robe. Sorry about that, y'all. He cut off Saul's room. Anyway, David's men are telling David, said, David, your enemy's in your hands. David, it's time for you to kill him. David, you know you've been anointed to be next king. It's time for you to kill Saul. God has put him in your hands so that you can kill him and you can be the king of Israel. That's what David's men is telling him. Do we really believe that's what God is saying? 
Think about that for a minute. You got 400 men or every how many's in there at this time right now. And they're all speaking in one voice. Telling David what he needs to do. It's a perfect scenario. It looks good, don't it? It looks like David knows he's going to be next king, y'all. He knows he's anointed for kingship. And it looks really good. You would think, hey, you know King Saul's not doing right. He's a bad king. He's not listening to God. He's doing things his own way. And if we're not careful, y'all, I'm telling you, you can be so tricked, you can be so deceived that you begin to listen to the voices of men instead of the voice of God. And this is the place. Now, remember, this is a man. David is a man, what? After God's own heart. So what do you do, y'all? What do you do when the enemy is vulnerable? What do you do when you've got an opportunity to slay the enemy? What do you do when you've got an opportunity to say, man, I'm going to be king. I'm fixing to kill this guy so I can get in my position. Somebody help me. What do you do when you've got an opportunity to, to kill somebody with your tongue so that you can get in the place that you want to be? Oh, somebody help me up in here. Let's take this thing home. Come on. What do we do when there's a golden opportunity that we can expose somebody? Come on. We've got a golden opportunity. They did what they did. We've got an opportunity to expose them. That would benefit us. What do we do? What do you do? What does a man of God do? What does a man who has a heart after God do? See, church, this is something we've got to search our hearts today. What do we do when there's opposition? And we've got all right. We've got the right to do what we want to do because of what they have done to us. What do we do? Do we listen to the voice of men or do we listen to the voice of God? Do we take vengeance in our own hand or do we leave vengeance up to God? Somebody help me up in here because this will help you if we can get it, okay? Verse 4, David said this, really the, the men of David, David's men are saying, David, this is your day of opportunity. This is the day the Lord's made for you, David. This is the time can I please tell you this was not the time? It's not time to take vengeance. It's not time to, to be contrary to what God has already told you. If God has anointed David to be king, let me tell you this. God don't need no help getting him there. Amen. Whatever calling and purpose you have in your life, let me tell you, man is not going to, can't, man can't keep you from your purpose. No man can keep you from your purpose. God will do what he says he's going to do and he'll get you there the way he wants you to be there. The problem is we try to do it our own way. Come on, and we make a mess out of it. God then told Abraham, hey, you're going to be the father of many nations. Well, when it didn't happen, when they thought it was going to happen, guess what? He went to his concubine. He listened to his wife, started having kids. But that wasn't God's way. Somebody help me up in here. God didn't need no help. God don't need no help to take vengeance. I don't know why we think we've got to retaliate and do things we ain't got no business doing. If we step back and say, God, here it is, I promise you God will retaliate. God says vengeance is mine. He takes care of his people, amen? But, we, but we've got to get our heart right so that he can. Can I get another amen up in here? See, this is what we really call the Lord's will incentive. We believe, oh, this is the Lord's will. The men of David are saying, oh, this is the Lord's will, David, or it wouldn't be happening. Anybody ever told you that? It wouldn't be happening if it wasn't the Lord's will. This is the Lord's will. No one getting well, it's not, if you've got a heart after God. This is not the Lord's leading, y'all. It's man's leading. Man will lead you to a pit. God will bring you out of it. Come on, somebody help me. I know we're going to get a bunch of amens up here, but that's okay. So David, guess what, y'all? David doesn't kill Saul. He's not listening to the men. He's not going to kill Saul. He only cuts the edge of his robe. Now think about this for a minute. Because I, I, I'm thinking about this. David has swords. His men have swords. Very easily they could have killed Saul. Boom. I mean, it could be a done deal. Even one of his men could have done it. But what David does, he cuts a piece of the garment of the robe of Saul. Now think about this. For a minute. What's the big deal? To us, he's got an opportunity to kill him. He don't. All he does is cuts off a little bit of the garment. Well, I want you to think about this for a little bit, okay? Because look at verse 5. This, this is... Verse 5 tells us 
the man that God is dealing with here, y'all. This is a man who has a heart, remember, a heart like God. He says in verse 5, it came to pass afterward that David's heart, what? Smote him. Because he cut off Saul's skirt. Because he cut off a part of that garment. He's being convicted, y'all. See, that looks like a small matter to us. Because he has an opportunity to do something a whole lot worse to kill him. But because David has a heart after God, think about that for me. Even, even the, little, the, the most little thing of cutting off that skirt, uh, that robe, brings conviction to this man of God. Man, when I see that, I say, good Lord, how many of us are in that place? I'm, I'm talking about myself. I'm preaching to me too. How many of us are in that place? See, it's the little things, y'all. It's the little things that lead into the major things. Come on, it's the little things. that it, it, we, we think it's all right. Oh, it's just a little thing. It don't mean much. Yes, it means a lot in God's eyes. Amen? Think about this for a minute. See, there's no such thing, y'all, as a small step on a road to temptation, to retaliate, or to take revenge. Well, I'm just going to show him who's really in control. I'm just going to show him. No, you don't have to show him. God will show him. Somebody help me up in here. Our nature, y'all, our nature, we want to retaliate. Trust me, before I got to know the Lord, before I was saved and born again, we, everybody in here, we've all retaliated. Somebody hits you at school, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to knock them back. You're going to hit. You're going to be fine. You're going to be doing things. Somebody steals from you, you're going to try to take something from them or you're going to punish them because they did. And see, our nature is to retaliate on everything. But see, if we could ever learn not to retaliate, let God retaliate, can you imagine what would happen then? Somebody had me up in here. God can fight a whole lot better than me and you ever had time to think about. God does, God will take revenge, y'all. We think we've got to get back at somebody because that somebody done us wrong. We think we have the right to do, some, to do somebody harm because they harmed us. Let me tell you, we don't have that right if we belong to God. God says vengeance is mine and he means that. I'm trying to tell you something up in here, y'all. See, we can love one another. It's easy to do. I know this is a hard message, but it's hard for all of us. But this is something God has to put in our spirit so that we can get to the place that God wants to get us to. It's real easy to love somebody who's loving you back. But can we really, truly love our enemies? See, the Bible tells us to love our enemies. If we're not loving our enemies, what are we doing? Good Lord, that's hard, ain't it? If we're not loving those who hate us, want to destroy us, what are we doing? Do we really have God's love in our heart? Or do, you, or do we just say it? I can tell everybody in here I love you. But can I prove it by the things I do? Jesus. See, I can sit here and say I love you all the time, not never do nothing for you. Is that really love? Help me, Lord. Think about it. We've got to stop this place of where we, where we think we have the right to retaliate and to, pay, and to do vengeance. God will repay church. I don't know how much I can say that. God will repay that person who's done you wrong. Somebody help me up here. He will. He will. I promise you, he will. There's things I can't even share in my life. I've seen God do, y'all. I won't even talk about them because I know God passed judgment on some things. And I dare not because I, I, I don't want to get this up any kind of pride or anything, but I promise you, God will take care of his children. He takes care of his people. He takes care of his men and women. He's just trying to get us a heart like his heart. Can I get another amen up in here? Even a small step in revenge, y'all, is a wrong step. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 says this. And he said unto his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this thing unto my master, the Lord's anointed, to stretch forth my hand against him, seeing he is the anointed of the Lord. Two things that David realizes, y'all, in this verse 6. The first thing is, Saul is the anointed king of Israel. Number one, David realizes, guess who anointed Saul to be king? The Lord did. God did it. He gave the people what they wanted. But yet it was God who anointed Saul. David realized that Saul is the anointed king of Israel. So here, here's what he said. Here's what he's got in his spirit, y'all. He says, I have no business really coming against God's anointed. That's what he realizes. Think about that for a minute, y'all. I've seen people come against God's anointed and blast them out of the water with their tongue. I'm telling y'all, that's a dangerous thing. Somebody help me again. <laughs> Somebody help me. It's dangerous to come against God's anointed. Anybody, God's got to know. Everybody in here, we're all anointed. Amen. 
Do you think it'd be right for me to come up tonight and just blast him out of the water because I know something he did that wasn't right? Come on, and blast him to every one of y'all. Y'all think that's right? Him being anointed of God, a man of God, that a man of God that he is? But yet sometimes we do that and don't think nothing about it. See, David realized that. Why? He's got a heart after God. He's got a heart, heart like God does. Number two, here is a righteous principle, y'all, that I hope we can get in our spirit today. Was Saul in the wrong? Saul, King Saul, yes, he was in the wrong. Amen? He's trying to kill David. There's no doubt about it. Saul is wrong. His life is wrong. His life's not right, okay? Was it David's job, though? Here's what I want you to see. Saul, King Saul, was in the wrong for what he was doing. But was it David's job to make it right? Think about that for a minute. Has anybody in here been done wrong? <laughs> Am I the only one? Come on. We've all been done wrong in here. It's hard. Amen, Don. Amen. All of us have been done wrong. Ain't nobody in here ain't never been done wrong. But see, David realized it ain't his job to fix it. It ain't his job to pass revenge. It ain't his job to retaliate. Come on. It was God's job. And here's the thing. Here's a, here's a spiritual principle. David knew it. It's up to God, y'all. Good Lord, oh, Lord, someone help me up in here. It's up to God to fix that thing. Whoever done you wrong, it's up to God to move. And I promise you, say, all right, Lord, you seen it. You see what they've done. I put it in his hands. I'm praying for him. Lord God, you do what you want done. Your will be done. And I promise you, God will begin to move. God will do what they got to do the right thing. We'll mess it up, but God will do the right thing. My Lord, if you look at this whole story, and I know I'm getting ahead, Saul paid a heavy price for what he did. He fell on his own sword, y'all. He died in battle. He went to a witch of Endor. That's another message we'll probably get to. But he went to a witch. He went to, to the devil to get advice. Never go to the devil to get advice, y'all. Go to the Lord. And in fact, Saul fell on his own sword. He killed himself with his own sword. Don't tell me God won't repay or vengeance is not his. It is. See, you can't come against God's anointed. David was anointed of God. Saul's coming against him. I mean, Saul's coming against him every day. But yet, but David, a man after God's own heart, because of that position, the authority that Saul's in, David won't mess with it. Lord, it's yours. Oh, Lord, I wish we could get that in our spirit. We've got to learn to let God make it right. Verse 7. So David stayed his servants with these words, suffered them not to rise against Saul. But Saul rose up out of the cave and went on his way. I love this, y'all. Because even David persuaded his men to do the right thing. I've heard pastors, I've seen them on TV, and they said, I heard one of them say, said, if somebody hits you with a two by four, you pick up two before it hit them again. You hit them. That's not in the Bible. I can't find that nowhere, y'all. So if this person does that to you, you do that to them. It's not in the Bible, church. We like to do that. Our nature, we want to. I mean, my Lord, I've been hit, hit upside the head with a lot. I've had a pencil, went through my lip. In high school, come on, fighting like crazy, acting crazy, vengeance, wanting to retaliate, didn't do no good, got me kicked out of school for a while, because somebody give me an amen on that. <laughs> got a hole in my lip and got a, because somebody said one word to me, I mean, see, that's how stupid we are. Can I just share a little bit about me? You might not have heard how stupid we are. I was, in, I was in school and this boy said something to me and I'm trying to impress this girl beside me. Ain't that really stupid? Anybody ever been there? I'm the only one. I want to impress this girl. She's real pretty. I said, my Lord, you know, she's sitting down beside me. And this the boy says a word to me that I don't like. So what do I do? I grab him and throw him across the, uh, throw, throw the table in school. I'm supposed to be in the, in the band class. Throw the boy over the, over the uh, throw him over a bunch of desks. I mean, just throw him. And I'm not really that big. I was just mad. And boy, when I threw him, the band director looked at me, hollered my name. He said, Donnie. Boy, when I looked at the band director, well, that boy just put a pencil between his, uh, his fingers. And I didn't know it. And boy, he cold caught me right there. Punched a hole all the way through my lip. Blood going all over the place. And then the band director grabs me. And holds me where I can't do nothing. I'm hitting him. I'm doing all kinds of stuff. But ain't that crazy, y'all? You see what kind of mess we make out of things when we take vengeance. Now, I shared that with y'all because I didn't know the Lord. Then I wasn't serving the Lord. Amen? I didn't have the Spirit of God in me. But we do stupid things by just a word. Somebody say a word. We think we got to retaliate and we make it worse. Y'all, I got kicked out of school for a while. And I didn't even really start it or I didn't think I did. But I guess I probably did in a sense. But ain't that stupid? 
That's what happens, y'all, when we retaliate. We take it out of God's hands. God knows how to fix things, and he will. Well, give me, David knew vengeance is mine. I will repay. That's what the word of God says in Romans 12, 19. Look, verse 8 and 9. David also arose afterward and went out of the cave, and then he cried after Saul. I want y'all to watch this. He said, my Lord, the king. And when Saul looked behind him, David stooped with his face to the earth and bowed himself. He, and David said to Saul, he, this is David's enemy, y'all. This is King Saul. He says, wherefore hearest thou man's words, saying, behold, David seeks your, your hurt. David is being wronged. He's being chased. This man wants to kill him. But look what he says, y'all. He says this, why do you listen to man's words that I seek to harm you? David said, Saul, you listen to all of these people. I, I, I don't want to harm you. I don't want to kill you. In fact, guess what, y'all? He could have killed him very easily, amen? But what David is doing, y'all, he's declaring something. He's declaring truth to Saul. David is telling Saul truth. He says, the truth is, Saul, you've been listening to the wrong voices. I'm not here to hurt you. I could have killed you. I didn't do it. See, you can't change. Listen to me, church, right here. This is good. You can't change your enemy but you can make sure he hears the truth. Amen. Come on, let me say that one more time. You can't change your enemy. You can't change those around you, those that hate you, but you can darn for sure make sure that they hear truth yes. coming out of your mouth. Amen. And the truth is, we love our enemy. Yes. Somebody help me. Is that hard to swallow? You better believe it is. Yeah, Frank, it's hard, brother. That's a hard thing to swallow. Ain't, I'm going to tell you right now, the natural person can't do it. In your natural self, you cannot love your enemy. It is impossible. But we sit here and say, we got the, with the temple of the Holy Ghost. We got the Spirit of God in us. We do this. We do that. We cleanse by the blood. We belong to God. We'll sing things, but do we really believe what we sing? Do we walk what we sing? Do we walk what we, do we really love like the way that God wants us to love, church? Quiet, ain't it? Judas betrayed Jesus, y'all. Judas, one of the apostles, the disciple that Jesus chose, betrayed him. Betrayed him so bad. But, but think about it. Jesus knew all about Judas. Judas betrayed him, but Jesus loved him. And y'all, everybody said, well, that's Jesus. We always say, well, we got the same kind of spirit that Jesus got in us. Amen. The same spirit that's in Jesus is in us. We're supposed to. This is a hard message, isn't it? Come on, y'all. But if we're not, if we're just loving those again that love us and we're not loving our enemies, what are we really doing? Are we really Christians? <laughs> Do we really have the love of God in us? Do we really know the Father? Do we really have a heart after God? This is a man who has a heart after God, y'all. This is a man who wouldn't plan. King Saul was chasing him every day to kill him. Had his sword drawn, y'all. Had men out every day. And yet, David, look at this. Look at this man of God. Verse 15. Skip to verse 15. It says, The Lord therefore be judge. Judge between you, me and you. David is telling King Saul, that look, The Lord judge between me and you. And see, plead my cause, deliver me out of your hand. God continually, y'all, delivered David out of Saul's hand. Why? Because that man had a purpose. God had a purpose for David. Saul couldn't kill him. There was no way Saul could kill him because God's got his hand on him. But see, he's teaching David to trust him. The, the higher you're calling, y'all, the more you've got to learn to trust the Lord. Come on, when God's going to put you in a place of authority, you have really got to learn to trust him. Because we can abuse God's power. God ain't going to let nobody abuse his power to cost you some stuff. Look at verse 16. It said, it came to pass when David made an end of speaking these words. Saul said, now this is what happens, y'all. This is what happened to King Saul. He says, is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and he wept. The king is weeping. The king is crying. King Saul is. And he said to David, you're more righteous than I am. For you have rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded you evil. Think about that for a minute. Boy, that, that, won't that change a person's heart? That got King Saul to thinking. See, when you do good to those who are doing you evil, it gets the people to thinking on it. What's going on? I done them evil. Why ain't they doing me evil back? That's the way the world does it. They ain't the way God does it. And see, David knows that. Saul sees it now. 
David, I've been trying to kill you. I've been seeking your life. I want to do these things to you. And you've done me good. You're doing good to me. See, we're to never render. The Bible even says, y'all, we're not to render evil for evil. We're to render what? Good for evil. Is that a natural thing to do? No. Is it a supernatural thing to do by the Spirit of the living God? Yes. Can you do that? Yes, if you know who's on the inside of you. Can you do that? Yes, if you're full of the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God's leading and guiding you. Can you do that? Yes, if you're not walking in the flesh. Somebody help me up in here. Can you do it? Yes, if you're walking in the Spirit. Where you're supposed to be walking. Somebody help me again. Come on. Can I get an amen up in here? I told you I won't get no heap in the hollering, but praise God, we need a message like this sometimes, you know. Verse 18, you showed me this day how that you have dealt with me for as much as when the Lord had delivered me into your hand, you killed me not. If a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? The Lord reward you good for what you have done unto me this day. Do y'all realize God did reward David good because of his heart, because of what he done? Let me tell you this right here, y'all. When a man's ways, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace. See, God calls peace to come right there. Now, we know later on things are going to happen, but I'm talking about this instance right here. You know, think about it for me. If Saul could have still called his 3,000 men, come over and killed David, even right then. But God calls a peace to fall. See, a lot of people don't have the peace of God. You know why people don't have the peace of God? Because they're still not being obedient to what God wants them to do. You can have God's peace through the, the, the hardest storm you've ever had in your life. I promise you, you can have God's peace. His peace will reside in your house, in your home, when we learn to trust Him and give it all to Him. I don't have to take revenge, y'all. I don't have to retaliate. I let God do it. He fights a whole lot better than I do. Ain't nobody ever put a hole in His lips. Somebody help me up in here. And ain't nobody ever going to. Come on, somebody help me. Good Lord. See, we men, we, me and Don, as men, we have a harder time with this because I'm telling you, as men, we want to fight. Men, it's man's nature to fight, to stand up and to do something. But God is trying to show us, son, am I your daddy or not? Am I, am I your father or not? Son, don't you think I have the best for you? Come on, men. We got to learn to let God fight for us. Moses had to learn that. It took him 40 years. I hope it don't take us that long. I don't think I got 40 more years. So I'm going to help me up in here. <laughs> Unless God's really good to me. Did it by uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I can't do it. 95. Praise the Lord. I have 40 more. Praise the name of Jesus. All right, listen. We're almost through with this, y'all. Verse 20. Look, look at verse 20 through 22. I want to give you three principles, y'all, for us today that we can live by, okay, in these verses. Verse 20 through 22. It says, Now behold, I know well that you shall surely be king, that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Okay, this is all talking to David. Swear now, therefore, unto me by the Lord, that you will not cut off my seed after me, that you will not destroy my name out of my father's house. And David swore unto Saul. Saul went home, and David and his men got them up into the hold. Three principles, three things I want to point out right here, y'all, as we close this message, okay? These are three principles that we can live by today. And this is good for all of us. Every one of us that I'm fixing to say is in this category, okay? Because I know we all want to be like David, and we should. That's, that's, that's good. Principle number one. Since man is depraved, expect to be mistreated. Let me say that one more time. Since man is depraved, expect to be mistreated. The same nature, the same nature, y'all, that beat in the heart of Saul beats in the heart of every person. In other words, there's a little Saul in all of us. Come on. If you think there ain't no Saul in you, you better, you, you're making a mistake already. That's the principle to remember, y'all. There's a little Saul in all of us. We have to crucify. We have to push that thing down. We can't, let the, we can't let Saul have his way in our heart because we have a new nature. We have the nature of Christ in us now. We have the Spirit of God. Amen. So there's a little Saul where we want to do things our way and we come against God's anointing and we do things. We have to shut it down, crucify our flesh, so, and don't do it. That's principle number one to live by today, y'all. That same nature is in us, y'all. How many realize when you say born again, you got God's nature and you got your sinful nature in you? Yeah. And there's a battle between that, amen. A lot of people says they think when they get saved and born again that God's nature is in them and they don't have to worry about their old nature. Let me tell you, your old nature will be with you till the day you die. 
Come on, and there's a battle in that with your old nature. Anybody in here thinks they're not battling, there's something wrong if you think you're not battling your old nature because you will. The things we used to do try to creep in. They try to come in, okay? We try to retaliate in our nature, but we got a new nature that we've got to learn. Say, Lord, it's your nature that's in me. I've got to learn to walk in your nature. I've got to learn to walk in that spiritual, in that, in that, that with my spirit man, my inner man. Can I get an Amen. Not my fleshly man that always wants to do things his way. That's principle number one. Principle, well, let me just, well, principle number two. Principle number two, anticipate the feelings of revenge. In other words, everybody in here, every one of us right now, anticipate that you will have feelings that you want to take revenge. If somebody does you wrong, the first thing that's going to come, boom, we ready, y'all. We want to do something. So here's a principle, y'all. Anticipate those feelings that are going to be there. I'm just realize that feelings of revenge are going to come. Just don't give in to them. Can I get an amen? amen? Feelings of revenge will come. Don't give in to them. Something I just can't tell y'all that I used to do or I'd done before I got saved because it ain't good, Okay. I mean, I was the only one talked about it, really. Some stuff. I want to try to tell a little thing. I don't know if I should or not. <laughs> I'm in, a, I'm in, a, in, be, in between. Because, Lord, y'all might not like me no more. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Before I got saved, y'all, you do all kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? And see, <laughs> it don't matter then because you wouldn't say, but you can't use that as an excuse now is what I'm saying, to do what you want to do. I mean, I've... Had uh, we just gonna skip that? Praise God! I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't fix it. <laughs> oh Lord, help me, y'all. We we do things we ain't got no business doing. But as born again Christians, y'all, we shouldn't do that. You, those feelings of revenge are gonna come. Don't give in to them, because it don't take. But listen, y'all, how long does it take? It don't take, but just like that. That's why I tell Christians, as born again Christians. Don't shoot your mouth off. Wait. Somebody saying something to you, just wait. Because before you know it, you done said something, you ain't got no bit to say. Come on. Somebody's chewing you out and you know they're wrong, they don't even know what they're talking about. First thing you do is you lie into them, boy, you just expose everything about them. Was that the right thing to do? No. You just can't do that, y'all. Not as a born-again Christian. We've got to do it God's way. Number, uh, well, let me just put this in with number two, okay? Not about retaliating. That's why Jesus said this, y'all. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Amen. Think about that for a minute. We, 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 we think about that so fast. We hear it all the time. Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. But don't do as they do to you. Think about that. If you don't want somebody to massacre you, don't massacre somebody else. If you don't want somebody talking about you, don't talk about somebody else. If you don't want that, don't do it. Don't do like a person does to you. Don't do it because you don't want that. You don't like it. It don't feel good, does it? Has anybody ever been talked about in here? <laughs> well, I have. Hallelujah. It don't matter, though. I've learned it just don't matter, you know? Some people say, boy, that boy's crazy. He ain't no okay, number three, y'all. The third principle to live by today. Refuse to fight in the flesh. Let me say that one more time. Refuse to fight in the flesh. What does that mean? Let me tell you. In Romans chapter 12, this is where we're going to end it, y'all. Romans chapter 12. Really, you got to refuse to fight in the flesh. You just give it to God. God fights your battles. Romans 12, 17 says this. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible as such as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. I promise you God will repay, church, and he can repay a whole lot better than we can. Amen. Then it says, verse 20, therefore, if your enemy hunger, do what? Feed him. Well, we can say it all day long, can't we? If your enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, you shall heap coals of fire on his head. I've heard some people say, well, I'm just doing that so God will put them coals of fire on his head. 
Got to watch out for that too, y'all. That's the wrong motive, amen. But God will put fires of coal on his head and they will repay. I mean, they will repay. God, God's not kidding. God takes care of his children and he really does. We don't have to take vengeance. That's the one thing we got to get in our spirit. Then it says in verse 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with what? Y'all, that's the only thing that's going to win these battles we're in. We overcome evil with good. Anybody can do evil all the time. We can retaliate. We can do whatever we want to do. That's easy to do. It's not so easy. It takes the Spirit of God. It takes the power of God in us to do good to evil when somebody's doing us wrong, to treat them good. Amen? Amen. Treat them good. It don't matter. Treat them good. It's in God's hands. Treat them good. You're not going to win nobody by treating them evil. You're not going to win nobody by treating them bad. I've heard people, I mean, some Christians, my Lord, they always just, I, I don't know. It's like they don't have a heart for people. We've got to learn to have a heart for people. Sometimes they hear me. He's hollering the loudest. He's on the verge of maybe getting saved, God doing something in his, in his life. But then we mess it all up because, well, look what he did to me. I'm going to get him back. And we mess the whole process of God has to start all over in their life. And maybe that blood's going to be our, on our hand because of the way we handle the situation. Amen. Somebody help me up in here. That's a hard message, ain't it? It's hard for me too, y'all, but I've learned to trust God. I had to learn to trust the Lord. You, God cannot put us in the place he wants us to be until we get to the place where we really trust him and we have a heart like his heart. His heart, he loves people. Regardless, he loved me and he loved you when we were out there in a mess. Y'all, I was blaspheming his name. I was cussing like a sailor. I was doing all kind of crazy stuff. There was no need for God to love me. That there was nothing in me. I'm telling you, people say, oh, God seen something in you. No, God didn't see nothing in me. It's his mercy and his grace and his love. He just poured it out. Come on, y'all. I didn't deserve his love. I didn't deserve his mercy. I didn't deserve his grace. But he did it anyway. He overlooked my sins, all that mess, all that garbage, all the junk I was doing. He looked over that and he saved me and he brought me out of that mess. Come on. How much more can God use us? See, God used people in my life. I didn't realize it at the time. God used my grandma. I said, Donnie, you got to be under the blood. God used people I worked with. He said, they'd say, Donnie, you know, you can cuss all you want, but please don't lose my Lord's name in vain. I mean, they said, Donnie, if you don't care about your life, what about your kids? What about your children? Do you care about them? Maybe you don't care about your life, but think about them. God put people around you to, to speak a word. You see what I'm saying? To, to help. For they're there. But Lord, nobody was just, you know what I'm saying? They wouldn't just say, hey, man, you, you're going to hell. Let's go on. Like some people say, oh, you're going to hell. Let them go to hell. That's where they want to go. Y'all, if we could just see hell at one time, if God would open up hell and let us see it, we would not want any person that we ever know to go to hell. Because you're talking about a place of torment for all eternity that I'll never let up. Never. We cannot fathom that. And see, we all in here right now, every single one of us right now deserve hell. We don't like to think that. We think we're good in our own eyes. We compare ourselves, I'd never do this, I'd never do that. We think we wouldn't until we get in that position to that place and we'll realize we're not as strong as we think we was. Come on. It's all by God's grace and mercy. Y'all, it should be our heart's desire to do good for evil, to try to win a life, to, to try to keep somebody from going to hell, to do our part. Lord, use me for your glory. I, I didn't deserve it, Lord, but Lord, you saved me. You brought me out. Now, Lord, help me. To, teach me, Lord. Teach me. Y'all, I think we ought to pray this sometime. Lord, teach me to love the way you love. Lord, this little love I got is it, nothing compared to your love. Lord, teach me how to, how to love the way you love. Lord, you love people. It's your heart's desire that none should perish. Lord, put that in my spirit. Help me to know that, Lord. Help me to experience that. Help, help me to love the Lord the way you love people. Lord, we, we need that. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. So I'm going to ask you this, y'all. How often should we get revenge? Never. Let God get it. Let God do it. Let God be the judge. Here's a piece of meat I'm going to leave you with, and this is it, okay? And this is, just let me give you this. You will never be in bondage when you forgive someone who doesn't deserve it. Say that one more time. You will never be in bondage when you forgive someone who does not deserve it. 
But I promise you this, if you do not forgive someone, that person is free to do whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? But if you choose not to forgive them, guess who's in bondage? They not. You are. It's like we're in a little cage. It's like we're in this cage because we have chosen to be in that cage, in that cage for not forgiving someone. And we can't have the freedom that we, we need, that we want, that we want to walk in. Come on, church, I've been there. I've been in places where, hey, I shouldn't have to forgive that person for what they did. Wow. Good Lord. <laughs> Lord, I did it anyway. Lord, I choose to do it anyway. <coughs> and when you do that, it's like God looses you. Yes. It's like you're loosed. You, you don't have that, bur you're not burdened down. Amen. You don't have this weight upon you. Yes. And you forgive. It's the most liberating thing. I don't know how to even explain that, y'all. Because all of us have been hurt in here. We've all been mistreated. We've all been done wrong. But what happens, we get caught up in that mistreatment. We get caught up in that place where we can't even live. It's like we're stifled because we got this thing burning us down and we can't get it off our mind. We can't get it out of our heart until you release it and give it to the Lord. But when you give it to the Lord, He looses you. He frees you. You're just free from it. And it's the most liberating thing I can tell you. So what do you do, church? What do we do when our enemy comes against us? What do we do when we have an opportunity to retaliate? My prayer is that every person in this, in this congregation, every, every man, every woman, that we do like David did, we'd have a heart after God. We begin to experience God's heart in us and do what God would have us to do in that situation. If you would stand on your feet, every head bowed, every eye closed.